Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how to solve a system of nonlinear equations. And in particular we're going to look at a linear equation and a quadratic equation. So when we graph these two, well we do have three methods, right? We could solve by graphing, we could solve by substitution, or we could solve by elimination. So in this video we're going to focus on the method of graphing. And you could do this on your TI-84 Plus CE graphing calculator to give you a more visual and to use the intersection feature to find the solution. But we can also do it by hand, and that's what we're going to do in this video. So we're going to do three examples uh, because we could have three types of solutions. We could have no solution, which we see right here on the left side of the screen, because we have no intersection. So here we would have no solution. In the middle, we could have one intersection, which would give us one solution. And in that case, we can find the coordinates of that solution, x, comma, y. And lastly, something that we didn't see with linear systems, we could have two intersections. So that would give us two solutions. So in that case, we would have two x coordinates. We would plug those back into our original equations to solve for two y coordinates, and those would be our two solutions. So let's take a look at each of these examples. So example number one, we have y equals negative x plus eight, that's our linear equation. And we have y equals negative two x squared plus four x plus three as our quadratic. So let's go ahead and graph the linear equation. So negative x plus eight, y-intercept at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So all the way up here at the top. And our slope is negative one. So it's just down one and right one, just like this. Okay, so there's our linear equation. And now for our quadratic, we have a little bit, it's a little bit more involved to graph it, right? We need to find the axis of symmetry so that we can look at the vertex, and then we can plot the y-intercept and just reflect it. So remember to find the axis of symmetry, we can do x equals opposite of b over 2a. So here b is negative four, or b is four, so the opposite of that would be negative four, and a is negative two. So we have x is equal to negative four over negative four, which is equal to positive one. So now we can take our axis of symmetry and place it on our graph, and we'll make this a dashed line. Okay, so now we can use the fact that x is equal to one to plug that back in to find the y coordinate of our vertex. So now let's say y equals negative two times one squared plus four times one plus three. And now we just solve to find the y coordinate of our vertex. So we have negative two times one plus four plus three. So this would be negative two plus four plus three. So negative two plus four would get us to two and plus three would get us to five. So we now know that our vertex is located at one comma five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so there's our vertex of our parabola. Now here our C value is our y-intercept, so one, two, three, and we can plot that there, and we can reflect a point on the right side of our axis of symmetry. So now we go ahead and we can graph our parabola. Let's get mine on here, and we'll kind of straighten it up just a little bit. And as we can see, our parabola and our linear function are not going to intersect, right? We have a parabola that opens down, so the vertex is the highest point, it's a maximum, so there is no intersection here. So for this one, we're gonna say there is no solution. So that is our no solution example. All right, example number two, y equals two x minus five and y equals x squared plus four x minus four. So let's graph our linear function. So negative five, one, two, three, four, five, and our slope is two, so up two, right one, or we could go down two and left one. Okay, so let's connect those points there. All right, pretty good. Now let's find our axis of symmetry for our quadratic, so opposite of b over two a. So we get negative four over two times one, which gives us negative two. So now we can put our axis of symmetry at negative two. And remember, this isn't part of our parabola per se, right? We don't actually see it. Um, this is just our line of reflection that our parabola is symmetrical about, right? So now we can take negative two and plug that in for x so that we can find the y coordinate of our vertex. So negative two squared is four minus eight minus four. So this is gonna give us y equals negative eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight y equals negative eight, and our y-intercept is negative four. So one, two, three, and four, okay? Let's actually, let's change up our color for the quadratic there. 
let's go red just so we can make sure we see the difference. So we had our vertex at negative two, negative eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we had our y-intercept at negative one, two, three, four. So now we can reflect that y-intercept to the left side of our axis of symmetry, two units to the left. And now we can draw our parabola. There we go. Okay, so now let's put our, all right, that's pretty good. Now let's take a look at our graphs. And so as we can see, I'll zoom in right here. We have a nice intersection point right there. So we only have one intersection. So that means there's gonna be one solution to this system. And that one solution is negative one, one, two, three, four, five, six, negative seven. So that is our one solution example, okay? And lastly, example number three. So we have y equals x minus one and we have y equals x squared minus six x plus five. So our linear function, negative one is our y-intercept and our slope is just one. So up one, right one, or we could go down one and left one. So let's graph our linear function. There we go. And now let's go and find the axis of symmetry. So x equals opposite of b over two a x equals, so b is negative six, so opposite of b would be positive six, two times one, and we get six over three, which is, now we get six over two, which is three, thinking a little bit ahead there. Six over two, which is three. So our axis of symmetry, one, two, three, x equals three, make that our dashed line. And now let's plug in three for x, just like we did on the previous two examples, so we can find the y coordinate of our vertex. So three squared is nine, six times three, 18. So nine minus 18 is negative nine. And plus five would get us to negative four. So now we have our vertex at three, negative four. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And here our y-intercept is five. So one, two, three, four, five. And we can reflect that point over one, two, three, one, two, three units over. Okay, all right, and now let's fix my line a little bit. It's just a tad bit off. There we go. All right, so now let's go ahead and graph our parabola. See if we can get it to stick this time. Perfect, wow, great. All right, put our arrows at the end, and now we can see we have two intersection points. Okay, so here we have one and also here up at the top. Okay, so this is gonna be an example of two solutions. And we can say our first solution, this one right here would be one, zero. And our other solution up at the top would be one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So six comma five. Okay, and so that's how you solve a system of linear, or excuse me, a system of nonlinear equations involving a linear and a quadratic equation. And we saw an example of no solution, one solution, and two solutions.